Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Never an Afterthought Show. I remain yours, Afolabi Imokwede, uh, the anchor of this show and the author of the Never an Afterthought book. It's my pleasure to welcome each and every one of you again to this engaging episode. Uh, firstly, let me thank you uh, for having us in your space, for having us in your homes, uh, even as you listen to us. I recognize and acknowledge the fact that there are thousands and millions of channels uh, you could be watching, uh, but for you to tune in uh, to watch us, we do appreciate that. Thank you uh, very much. Let's not forget that to join this conversation, we use our hashtag, uh, the never and afterthought, and we follow across all our social media channels, uh, Twitter, which is at NA underscore book, uh, Facebook and Instagram, which is at NA Afterthought. Drop me a note or uh, via email podcast at neverandafterthought.com. And of course, uh, you can always drop your comments on the channel, the comment section of the channel, wherein you're watching or listening to me. As is our usual custom, I will start this week. We normally we start every episode by reading some of our uh, feedbacks. But before I do that, let's remember uh, that the hashtag never an afterthought giveaway. Uh, our giveaway is still ongoing. Uh, the uh, giveaway of CV improvement, uh, courtesy of uh, the ad BDT, BTDT hub, uh, been there, done that hub, BTDT hub, which was um, the gift of Ogbeni Dipo uh, to our viewers. Uh, recall that uh, we launched that uh, giveaway last week, uh, last episode, and it would it would wrap up today after the show. So the rules again are one: you must follow us across all our social media channels. If it's Twitter, if it's Facebook uh, or Instagram, uh, that's the first thing you must do. Then beyond that, you need to repost uh, the deck, the information deck that we posted uh, during the show uh, last week. You need to repost it across. Uh, all your social media channels. Now, it's not just for you to just repost. You really need to engage, uh, engage that tweet or engage that, uh, you know, that post to ensure that it has engagement on your, on your, on your own channel because really, uh, the winner will be picked, uh, or, you know, the winners will be those with the highest, uh, engagement, right? So, uh, please, uh, keep, um, uh, keep, I mean, keep at it. It will end tonight. Uh, so I want you to, uh, to keep at it. So as it's my normal custom, I will start by um, sharing some of your feedbacks. Uh, and the reason we do this is for you to understand that this is your show. Uh, and how, how do you know it's your show? Because we listen to you. Uh, because we read your, we read your feedbacks because we process, uh, your feedback. Whatever you tell us, we, it's all part of the ingredients that we use in cooking um, every episode for you. So that's why I do that. It's actually not because you cannot read it uh, on the comment uh, comment section yourself. And it also shows uh, all our viewers that we glean across all channels. Uh, this, for example, now came through a uh, WhatsApp channel uh, from uh, the first feedback from my uh, UK mom, uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Wells, uh, came via WhatsApp and she says, the adage says that no one is too old to learn, and equally, no knowledge is wasted. I watched the show for the second time so far. It is interesting, it is informative and educative. I'm an 80 plus year old grandmother. I hope to be able to share some of the information that I've gained with my grandchildren. Please keep up the good work, best wishes always. Grandma, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, mommy. I uh, appreciate that. You know, it's always good when you see uh, friends and family support uh, whatever it is you do. Now, there's a positive uh, news here. If this were a church, we'll call it a testimony. Uh, but it's actually a testimony. Now, testimony is not related only to church, right? Uh, and this came from Akin uh, Oladapo, uh, Jen Jen. Yeah, and I recall I shared one of his feedbacks uh, last episode on LinkedIn. Now he has a testimony uh, from LinkedIn. He says, just a few days ago, I got a call from a company on LinkedIn asking if I would love to work with them. This program is really inspiring and educating. The best we can do for ourselves is to put what we learn here to practice. This is exactly what I said last week. Keep winning is not just a cliche. 
uh, and it's 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 for you uh, to really act on whatever it is we all learn uh, from this platform. Don't get me wrong; you are not the only one learning. I equally am learning, and I learn from your comments, uh, from your feedbacks, and of course from the wisdom of uh, our numerous guests uh, that that join me uh, to share of their wisdom as well. Another feedback uh, came from uh, an auntie, uh, Mrs. Folusho Samuel, and she says, I had a great time. Well done. You know, you reminded me of Christiana Amanpour's show, uh, Christiana Amanpour, CNN, the way you ended with the U.S. election and the young poet, which indeed is a global trending issue. Well done. Honestly, I see this never an afterthought show going places. I say amen to that and thank you, uh, Auntie Mrs. Samuel for this, uh, feedback. So I would, um, we'll go on a short break now and I will join you right after the break. Greetings, everyone. Thank you. If you're just joining us, uh, I want to say thank you for having us in your space. Thank you for having us uh, in your home. Uh, let's remember uh, the hashtag, our hashtag, the never an afterthought, is what you need to join our conversation across all our social media channels. Uh, Twitter at NAA underscore book, Facebook and Instagram at NA uh, afterthought. You can also drop me a note at any time, podcast at neveranafterthought.com. And uh, last but not the least, leave your comments on the comment section, the platform wherein you're listening or watching me. So, yes, last week, uh, our episode on uh, Keep Winning, uh, the beginning of our series on AI and you, we uh, one of the things we did was we launched a Twitter poll, uh, which has since closed. And that poll was uh, for you to vote on which lifestyle is easier. Is it entrepreneurship? Uh, or employment or paid employment. Uh, the poll, uh, the poll has closed and the results of the poll are that 38% uh, uh, of uh, our pollsters picked, uh, said entrepreneurship, uh, was easier and 62% uh, of our pollsters uh, said uh, paid employment, uh, it's easier. Well, uh, that's the A part of the poll. Uh, the B part is that to win our gifts, uh, you were to respond with your reason. Uh, so it's not just enough to poll, uh, but you also to respond with your reason why uh, you picked whichever one uh, you picked. So, uh, of course, some of you have done that. A lot of you probably didn't, uh, but some of you have done that. Uh, but uh, the winners uh, will be announced uh, at the end of this show. The production team are working now to uh, to collate all of that. And then uh, we will release uh, the winners at the end of this show. Uh, so stay tuned. And also we will also uh, post it on all our social media uh, social media channels. However, uh, the point is uh, we also mentioned uh, that there is none. So the, the word easier, I mean, I mean, limitations of words we had to pick. And it's again in your choice, in your opinion. Uh, but one of the things I did say last week is that uh, you actually can win and should win on both ways, uh, whether you are on the paid employment track or you are on the uh on the entrepreneurship uh, track, whichever track you are in, uh, you are qualified to win and you should win. And this platform is set up to share with us principles and life experiences uh, of how we can all win uh, together. So today's topic, we're going to be talking, uh, today we're going to be talking about side hustle. 
side hustle. That thing, if you recall, uh, last week I spoke when we uh, rounded up with Amanda Gorman's uh, The Heel Will Climb, uh, wherein she rounded up that poem with always, there is always going to be light. Uh, it's, uh, the, the only thing is, it's if only we are brave enough to see that light, or we are brave enough to be that light. So there's always going to be light. Uh, and I know that from a lot of uh, the feedbacks I've also gotten, uh, that part uh, hit home. It was a home run uh, for every one of us. Uh, the fact that there would always be light, uh, it's only if we are brave enough to see that light or if we are brave enough to be that light. So it's not just enough to see. Uh, uh, for us on NAA, at the, on the Never and After Touch show, is about you seeing and also about you being. Uh, that's what the show uh, is about. And we linked this to one of the things I also shared uh, last week about what do you see? And I was saying that I hope that we are all in the same company, uh, the company of those of us who are seeing opportunities in difficulties, especially uh, the present difficulties of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which is not just a health issue, uh, uh, but it's also, uh, it's not just a health issue, but it's also affected, uh, it's become an economic uh, issue. And because it's become an economic issue, it's now a life issue that is bothering a lot on even some mental illnesses at the moment. So we did say uh, that what do you see? And I remember I talked about the connection uh, the connection of your eyes and your ears and your heart, uh, if you really have those connections, uh, it will definitely bet uh, some side hustles, right? So today we'll be talking about side hustles, but I will not be talking uh, about the side hustle alone. I have a guest uh, that I'm excited uh, to bring uh, to bring on board uh, today. He'll be joining me. Uh, his name is Olan Rewaju Salu. Uh, he currently he is an associate of projects uh, with the Mary Stem Wealth Management uh, uh, Company. He, uh, on the side, uh, I like his profile. It says, "On the side, I manage uh, you know a few others, uh, a few other initiatives. Uh, on the side, he manages Softworks." Uh, uh, P and FS, it will tell us what that means in a minute, which he says is a real estate services, uh, company. He is an entrepreneur with years of experience, uh, both, uh, hustle and career experience in telecoms, in financial and the property sector. He's also a member of, uh, is a member, is a board member of a number of startup businesses, uh, but I'll mention those uh, in the course of my conversation with him. On this note, let me invite uh, my brother, my friend, Olanre Waju uh, Salu. Boda Lanre, how are you? Good evening. Yes, sir. Boda Lanre, now, I mean, uh, well, there was one thing I did not say. His Twitter handle is at Boda, B O D A, not Broda, you know, is a very, you know, the way Koloka Yoba Boda, B O D A underscore Larry, uh, Boda Larry. How are you doing, sir? I'm great. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. And let me uh, also commiserate uh, with you. Let me join our audience uh, to commiserate with you on the transition of your mother in law. Uh, your beloved uh, mother-in-law, uh, who I know uh, just uh, transitioned at the moment. Uh, so I, I we share our condolences uh, with you, with your wife, and indeed your uh, entire family. And it's our prayer that uh, God rest our soul and may, uh, may our soul rest in uh, perfect peace. Amen. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So, Brother Larry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And this, you know, there's a special thank you uh, to you because I know what bereavement is. I know what grief is. Uh, so uh, I really know what it is. But for you to still be able to keep, uh, keep a date with us uh, in spite of that, uh, it tells me of the fortitude uh, that you have. Uh, so I want to say thank you. And, and I just keep praying uh, for you and your family that God will give you all uh, the grace to bear this irreparable loss. Yeah. Amen. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Larry. Good, 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 good. So, yes, you are joining us on the Never and Afterthought show. 
And today we are speaking about side hustle. Uh, perhaps it's your profile that actually inspired uh, the topic. You know, when you said, I am Salu Olari Waju. Yes, <laughs> I am daytime with Mary Stem World Capital uh, as an associate in the organization, but on the side, I said, aha. That's where our topic will be, side hustle. So because it tells me that you are not just, uh, you are not just talking about side hustle, you are also living side hustle. But before we go into uh, you and your side hustle, let's get to know you, Larry. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Olari Waju Salu, Rebaman, as I sound, obviously. Um, <laughs> I studied estate management in Yaba College of Technology. Yes. That was, um, 2009, I graduated 2009, and since then I've actually had my hands in uh, various aspects of work. Even long before graduation, I can tell you categorically I've been doing a couple of things here and there, and it's just it came by nature and by virtue of the fact that I saw people around me doing the same thing, so it became a part of me. Um, Are you I'm telling some of those things? You know, so for school hustle, in other words, you are telling me that you did school hustle. Right, so tell us some of those school hustle that you did. I did mine. I had my own fair share when I was in school as well. So as in my book, those who don't know, go and read the book. Never and after thought. <laughs> uh, go to neverandafterthought.com and buy a copy of your book. So I had my fair share of my own school side hustle. But tell us uh, some of those side hustles you did while in school. Okay, like um, there's in Yaba Tech. Um, I will tell you categorically, I wasn't the very vocal kind of person. I was always observing people. So as a result of that, I observed a couple of needs that um, I realized people would need, you know, people might be finding hacks to gain access to. For example, it was easy for me to download materials online and search, researches and the likes. But I realized a couple of my mates, they're probably busy doing a thing or the other. And um, it's hard for them to take their time to sit and get research materials. So it was one of my options. I would download the materials, I would um, staple, keep it together. And I have this material or two, so you're looking for the social amount. Do you want it? I mean, they jump at it because eventually it's useful. Aside that, also, the so that's space. your own version of Bordalari's handout. You know, that's what the lecturer <laughs> well, used to do for us that time. Well, they, will, yeah, they call it they handout. Will, but we, that was Bordalari's <laughs> handout. Okay. Exactly. So it was easy for me to, you know, seek out materials that people might find hard to get. So I was always doing that. And that was on the loop. A lot of people didn't know that. But the only a lot of people knew back in school was I had this passion for class. You have a passion for so, cars. Cars, okay. Yes, cars. So, you know, categorically now, in our days in school, students drive and stop. You know, this one wants to drive, or this one has an uncle who wants to buy a car. I'll just tell you, I have someone that can sell to you. Let's go and inspect. And, you know, when we find time from school, we go out. And one of my uncle's friend happens to own a car lot, mobile autos. So, I'll just call him, Uncle Shegu. I have someone who wants to buy a client. I initially, he never took me seriously. So I'll just bring someone. Then now will come look at him and say, I'll bring my uncle. You know, that make, the nature of bringing someone, then I will say, I'll bring my uncle. He, may, he thought I was always joking. This one is not yeah. From the first sale, he realized, ah, this guy seems serious. And then, how much did I make from the first sale? Some days, 20 k Some days, thank you. But it was important cash. And I was always just, you know, getting it and keeping it. And he supported my needs in school. And it was easy to just, you know, tell to when you have money in your pocket. Your distraction yeah. would be, you know, and it would be limited and you can focus on your story. So that was basically loads of the things I did in school. I was always in the card business. And also my um, side also as a handout. Business. So I was just, you know, wrapping everything all together. till at some point, um, we had to go and do IT in school. So I had to work with an estate firm. So when I joined that estate firm, uh, I was finally hard adapted. Because the truth is, I'm not the kind of person you sit on the seat and tell him to. So I was always looking out, looking out, looking out. But at some point, I developed, you know, the kind of maturity expected of me so I was able to perform in my place of work. So I was able to balance it. So most times, whenever I'm at work, doing my work, I'm always just on the lookout, you know. Friends will send messages, I have someone who is interested in so-so car, so-so here. I'll tell you this thing. Does your, is your client ready? Once the client shows readiness, we are ready to move. And eventually, you get that car. And I could coordinate that right from where I was at work. Because all I have to do is just delegate. 
um, you know, be the middleman. Connect A to B. And A to C mm-hmm. get a B. And based on the fact that I have an agreement with the seller, I just, at the end of the day, I just go, sir, they bought the car, how far? Sometimes I don't even have to go. He'll just send it to me. So I can say categorically that just left that part in me that I wasn't sure I wanted to live on salary alone. Mm-hmm. So that side of something has always been there in me. Aside that, also a couple of our friends had businesses on the side that maybe they needed finance, you know, for operation and everything. And me, from my own side, I was very staff. I just said, you know, when you steal this deal, this is my percentage. He's ready to flow. I'll borrow you money. When I borrow you money, you return my money with the expected interest. Exactly. And everybody's. That one, it had its own downfalls too, whereby its downsides rather, whereby you know, people fail to live up to obligation. I mean, sometimes we move, sometimes we fight. But so far, it's just been a couple of things I've been doing around and all. So after school, NYSC, I took a, I, I took a break from the side hustle. I was just, you know, observing as always. I always work a lot. And I might not say much, but I'm taking notes, I'm watching. So that one day, I'll just ask you a question. And you'll be shocked. Most times, the reason for my silence is because I'm seeking out opportunity. You know, yeah. they say in the world, the silent person, when you watch them very well, they are the biggest listeners because they are taking note of everybody. So now it depends on what you do with that information you gather. So in my own silence, I was only taking notes, having an idea, even if it's something I can't immediately, you know, make available for the person. I'm trying to be the bridge. So it became a second nature to me. I was always just sticking out one deal or the other, sticking out one business or the other. So that's part of what made me a part of some of the businesses we mentioned there. They are friends' businesses, but you know, I invested and now dividends from there also keep coming. Mm. And um, so I find myself on the board of these businesses. So it's been, I would say it's a bit an easy ride, but I can tell you categorically um, the passion to have more. It's one of the reasons I can say that seems to be my fuel. It drives me to carry on. And as I said, I'm always looking, I'm always taking notes and trying to meet people's needs. So it has always worked for me. Let me chip one in. While I was in school, so I was doing one business. Um, there were these phones people used, Sim- um, Symbian phones. I don't know if you're mm. familiar with them. Yeah, I know Symbian. Symbian. Yeah, yeah. Now, the phone is very boring because it's mostly kind of business phone, some are fancy, but you know, if you don't have ways to get the best out of that phone, it's very, it's very, very um, boring. So at times, in my experience, I'll just go to the cyber cafe. I'll now go and look up sites where they have craft versions of these games, 3D games, soccer and the likes. And what do I do? I send each game for as low as 500 euros. So I was always using that also as a backup because trust me, you don't sell a car every day. But you exactly. need to actually focus and realize whatever you make from the car, it's always a reducing thing because you spend, you have the cheap spend, so reducing balance comes to play. So, in the event of that, you know, that's in a way catches it up as it supports me. Then I used to have all kinds. My house, there's a church next to my house. So, someone in that church just told him that there's this guy next door, he downloads games. And I can't forget that guy's name, Chicken. He came that day to my house and very tall somebody i was looking like sorry uh, do i know you he said someone gave me your number and uh, i need your help he now brought out his phone that's when i was at peace to now have a conversation with him he said sorry can you get in my car this place is hot i started getting scared again like, ah, get in your car how well you know leap of faith i followed him so when we got into his car he just showed me he needs games and what kind of games can i get him i said okay this is what i'm going to do I'll give you two games for free. So I gave him those games. When I gave him yeah. those games, he had to give me money. I said, no. But go, see, if you're comfortable, let's see next Sunday. And we might, you know, walk around something. Now, I was only selling my game, 500 dollars This guy had this game on his phone. He went to work. His colleagues saw it. They liked it. It was a combat game. So they came back to my house. So I had this visitors like group of older guys in my house wow. so my, then i was living with my grandma so she was shocked that Larry, are these your friends i said my customers said, what are you selling I, said, oh, no, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I have to manage her but 
she was skeptical. She will just come out of her room, she'll look at me. She'll pass. She'll read them. She'll say, give me more water. They'll say they're fine. I know they're older guys, like yeah. nine years, seven years older than me. And I'm in their midst. I, okay, so from that first day, I left with about 10K. I was like, hey. <laughs> Game that you were selling 500 naira. Can you imagine? Because they were too satisfied and they gave me 10K. So these guys were my clients. We didn't have a price. So they too would tell their friends, I have one guy, it's a very good book of come. Is so they started coming to my house. <laughs> so what they come, what, what game do you need? Soccer, adventure, this is I will do give them games. And they will go. They will come back again. I can say that was the highlight of my side also. And one of the things that made me really enjoy was fun that was making money. You know, at some point I got scared of the money I had on me. Mm. You know, typical school boy, you how do you explain to think 20k in your pocket? I don't know, but judging from my background, it's a lot of money yeah. in your pockets. Yeah. So, and before you finish spending that, next week, these guys are here again. Some days, they just call me, and Larry, I paid in the little token in your account. Thank you for the other day. And I'm like, but you paid for... And I would say, no, it's that guy's money. This one is my own money. So I was just having <laughs> money that was in, you know, I can't account for. So that was the part where I started, you know, okay, let me start saving. And I started saving. I got a laptop because then I kept all my phones and my, all the games in my phone. Just the installation of So I got a laptop. Mm. Then I had that laptop. I developed Insomnia because I was always looking at <laughs> going to like to football games. <laughs> but you know, I mean, it paid off. It was when I finished my hard money. <laughs> and that was it really for me. And so that's, I'm still that way, always looking, searching for the next year. Yeah. Yeah, so so uh, you know, I think for me, it, it, it tells me something. Uh, it says that you are one of those guys that is always a go to guy, uh, for cash, you can never go broke, you know, because there will always be <laughs> one cash or the they, other. They were down time to but there was cash, <laughs> obviously. Obviously, okay, this is this is very interesting, and a few things I'm, I'm picking from, um, for what you say, I'm going to take you on. Uh, on this, one of it you talked about the fact that the student, a silent observer, uh, perhaps is the best uh, or the, the best listener. You know, a silent observer is the best listener, and, and this uh, this perhaps tells me uh, something about one question I was going to ask you, but I will hold I will hold on to that uh, till till later. And this was about an article that you posted two years ago, 2019. Uh, but I'll hold on to that uh, till later. But let me ask, uh, and, I, and I note what you said, the passion to have more, uh, you know, the passion to have more. But of course, you're not looking to have more illegally or illegitimately, uh, but obviously, how can you have more within your legit uh, confines? Uh, that passion is something that has driven you then. Let me ask you, is that passion still driving you now? It's still driving I mean, <laughs> as we grow, taste and passion increases. You need this, you need that. You need to be able to mm. afford it. And a bit to afford it, what do you do? For me, I have to work harder. So, I mean, it continues. So that's it. Okay. Passion is now, is that the reason why um, you have... So tell us about how you then got into your day job. And, uh, you know, your, I mean, of course, I know you've moved across sectors uh, from... Uh, uh, from 2010, when you got into the active labor market, uh, but uh, tell us about uh, maybe some of your day job, maybe currently what you do, uh, uh, you know, at uh, Mary Stem, and more importantly, how even with that you are still able to uh, manage your side hustle. Uh, we'll take a short break, and we'll, uh, we'll 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 continue on that after the break. Success is a journey. There's no magic, no shortcut you would have to commit to do the work. What separates winners, the real winners, is not much talk, but much action. There is hard work and there's also smart work. Both are required. There is real success and there is artificial success. If you must win in 2021, which you should, you're going to need a huge dose of these ingredients that I've been sharing with you since the beginning of today's show. Please join me on YouTube every Thursday 
at 6 p.m. West African time for another exciting and engaging episode of the Never an Afterthought Show. Yes, greetings guys. Uh, thank you. If you're just joining us, uh, welcome to another exciting episode of the Never an Afterthought Show wherein we are talking about side hustle. Uh, and I'm not discussing this alone. I am. Uh, I have my brother and my friend, Olari Waju Salu, or I like to call him Boda Larry because that's his Twitter handle. At Boda, B-O-D-A, Boda Larry is a Yoruba boy. That's why we're calling it that way. So, uh, so you want to follow him? He's a very interesting character, exciting. Uh, if you if you've been joining, if you join me since the beginning of the show, I'm sure you can attest to that. But if you're just joining us, you are in for a thrill. Uh, so yes, I'm I'm here with Boda Larry, and we're discussing uh, side hustle. But just before I go back again to Larry, let me remind you uh, that our hashtag the never an afterthought is how you can con- is how you can join and continue. Uh, this conversation uh, across all our channels, social media channels, uh, Twitter at NAA underscore book, uh, Facebook and Instagram at NA Afterthoughts. Uh, drop me a note uh, via email podcast at neverandafterthought.com. And last but not the least, you can always drop your comments on the platform wherein you are watching or uh, wherein you are listening or watching me. So yes, Larry, thank you. Uh, it's been interesting uh, having you uh, so far. And uh, just before the break, we talked about. Uh, I was asking you about uh, what you know. How? What do you do? You know, what what do you do with your with your daytime? Uh, well, can you tell us something about your work at Maristem? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, with Maristem, I am an associate when it comes to property and real estate okay. in general, and. Um, it is a paid job, so my employer comes first, then my side exactly. also comes first. So, um, I just, uh, before now, I've already designed a work-life balance, so it made it easy for me to work um, when it comes to my, place, my paid job and equally my side also. Now, it's basically discipline. When I need to do what I have to do, I need to, uh, when I have a task and it has to do, the task is, prim- uh, is primary. So, it is very, very important to take that your paid job is primary. Unless you're ready to leave your paid job for your side hustle. Your paid job is, is primary. So in that regard, um, okay, let me just give you an, uh, an instance now. From the time I started working in 2010, I was the global company. I worked with Glow as a customer care agent. And this was a job. It was a shift. So we had morning shifts. We have afternoon shifts and we have evening shifts. I tell you, the night shift, basically. So when I have things to do for the rest of the day, my morning shift, I focus on them. So when I'm done with morning shift, the rest of the time is mine. And in the event when I have afternoon shift, you know, there's very little you can achieve in the morning. And when you do the afternoon shift, which you end up finishing around 7, 8, I think. I forgot. Yes, 8 o'clock. No, sorry, 7 o'clock. When you finish your, your afternoon shift around that time, the little time isn't enough. So... My afternoon shift is always for planning. So I use my afternoon shift to plan for the things I do during my off days and what I do with the rest of my morning shift. So it's always a kind of planning thing. Then when I stopped um, the job with Glow and I had to take another, take another job, which is a full, a full nine to five, where you go in the morning and come back in the evening. My weekends are sacred. Yes, your job might need your weekend occasionally, but you have to balance. So I use the entire week to plan, and if I need to do a couple of deliveries, I delegate. My deliverables, my deliverables basically are well delegated. So I can track on phone, and I probably might have maybe a cousin or a friend to just, you know, channel the job for me. In the event they kind of need to car now, and they can't need to, they decline it to expect, I probably will just hijack one of my friends who might be available and say, can you just help me take this client to the car lot? There's a car there waiting for them, let them inspect. And sometimes I deliberately cajole them to come around weekend so we can actually work during the weekend. Because as I said earlier, your paid job is your job. <laughs> the other one is just side hustle. You could pay more than your paid job at times, but you need to keep it your paid job seriously because that's what funds your lifestyle. The side hustle supports it, I believe, at least for me. So with my stem now, um, 
it's just the same way. I channel most of my work to the weekend. I can receive calls during the day so we can discuss work briefly. But definitely, we know categorically that we can't achieve anything on the same weekend. And if it's a must to achieve something, I just, you know, walk around um, getting someone, delegating the duties to some of my cousins or friends who might be available around that time. And considering this, um, since the COVID, um, there's this arrangement with work whereby you work some days on, some days off. That has made it even easier for me because I can use the rest of those days to do a couple of things. It means you work online and you work physically. So when I'm at work physically, it is strictly maritime time. When I'm online, it's maritime time, but I share a bit at times, you know, because you can easily juggle both. Multitask. Yeah. Exactly. I must start it out, you know, offending A, which is my sense. So most times I just, you know, switch between them and everything. And if I have to be physical, I go back to do my physical job. So it's just basically discipline. And I know my weekend belongs to me. So I mean, my, my hustle can actually carry on the weekend. You know, Larry, uh, you, know, you know, Larry, the truth is, uh, and that's what I always find, right? And that's why I always repeat this thing about universal principles. Our principles are universal. If you do what a successful man or woman did, you will get the same result the successful man or woman got. And why do I say this? It's often said uh, that uh, what people do with their spare time, uh, it's actually a measure of where... Uh, their passion, uh, their passion is, uh, and many times it's also a measure of the indicator of where you know where they can transit after uh, paid employment. Because one of the important questions, and uh, I want us to discuss it, it's always this uh, issue about uh, you know, so this issue about when is it time to quit, you know, your paid employment, you know, and follow your hustle uh, fully. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think you started answering it, but when you said your paid employment or your paid employer or your full-time employer uh, funds your lifestyle, your side also supports it. Uh, and I reckon at the point when uh, the support now becomes greater, you know, than the funding, uh, that's Absolutely. an indication. But let me, let, me let, you, let me allow you, let me allow you to speak to that. When do you think, uh, you know, that, well, you know, what are the measures by which you know that, okay, it's time for me to quit this and focus. My side also can become my main also. Well, it is very, very simple. Um, when you earn, say, 300,000 a month, and at the end of the month, the side also gives you 150. It's an indication that preparation, start planning. And um, if there's anything I advise anyone, when you're doing side also, just see. Just keep saving because... The truth is, all it takes is just one opportunity. And that savings you kept would be your grace. Saving grace. And eventually, you can move. So as I said earlier, if you're earning 300 and your side hustle is giving half your salary, it's an indication that you're beginning to do well on that side hustle. So I didn't say you should leave your job just yet. But I will tell you categorically, start planning. Because obviously, when you want to pick, focus on your side hustle, which means you need to expand, there are some things you need to put in place so as to encourage the productivity from the side hustle. So when your side hustle, as I said, again, I'm, I'm repeating it deliberately, when your side hustle gives you half of your um, monthly income, it's an indication for you to start planning. And when your side hustle starts giving you beyond it, it tells you one thing. If you invest eight to five in someone else's job, and you can achieve this. It's time to invest that much time in yours and see how well you can do. Trust me, as I said, you need to plan very, very, very well. Because equally, some side hustles can produce funds continually, while some, there'll be peak and off peak periods. For example, now, I do some um, real estate works. Um, I do some renovations. I do some maintenance jobs and the like. They don't come every day. But whenever they come, what do I do? I rush, I quickly get them out of the way, I get my assistants there, and I focus back on my own job, just to make sure I can keep with the commitment of my own client and equally keep with the, uh, the expectations of my paid job. So in event whereby the inflow stays consistent, and you can see the consistency, then you can know that categorically, if you've invested that nine to five time in your um, side office, there's a potential for growth. So, as I said, the income from your side also is what to show you 
when you can leave your your paid job. I believe that. Um, because yeah. It, uh, it, 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 so so I, I guess to make it clearer uh, for our audience, it's always the fact that there's a main also and there's a side also. So okay. wherein in your case, your main also is your paid employer. Uh, you know, that's the one that I like to say what you said. That's one that is funding your lifestyle while your side also is supporting. So, and then you are measuring your growth uh, between the growth of your side also uh, to the point where it is perhaps at 50%, 75% equal to your main also and oh, even your beyond middle. your main also. Now, there's something you said. Those are indicators for you to begin to plan your exits. Because that's one thing you find with a lot of all of us that are hustlers in Nigeria, right? We just see side hustle is doing well. Uh, then the next thing, first and foremost, most times we lack the discipline to separate, like you said, you know, that you, you must not be found wanting on your main. Uh, mm -hmm. So then maybe you got one query or the other, you just vex and just resign and things, and then you <laughs> then begin to have the top seat of it. I've not studied your side also enough to know that there are up times and uh, that there are down times and, you know, just didn't understand the nature of the So, So I like what you said, that anytime those markers are markers for planning, 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 uh, very important. And so by the time you have studied your side also properly, maybe haven't done it for three, four, five, you know, uh, financial years, you know, uh, and you studied it well, and you've seen it grow, and you see it exceed, you know, that's when you can now start talking about, about exit. But there was something you um, also mentioned, and that's when you talked about in some of your side also house, you can have uh, peak time and off peak, or up time and down time. Uh, but, you know, the beauty about the COVID new world reality, wherein a lot now is being done remotely, or part, part physical, part remote, and uh, we, we are now becoming more good managers of our time, it says that um, it enables us to be able to manage, you know, um, our timing properly, even with our, uh, with our side also. Uh, would, would, you agree, would you agree with that? Yes. Um, it helps you to manage your time properly because, I mean, right now, if you're working remotely, you don't have to dress a certain way. You can be in your pajamas while you run boat. For example, um, if you're working from home remotely and you run a delivery company, understanding the fact that even the delivery company, you don't need serious interfacing. All you have to do is delegate tasks and they go handle your deliveries while you can do your own job yeah. right from there. You'd realize that um, with these COVID times and everything, people in business have managed to, you know, devise a better way of handling their time. You understand? Like, different efforts at time management. Like some days, uh, when I'm walking from home, some days I might be in my pajamas from morning to evening. I mean, when I'm done, you know, I receive a call from work and I can quickly deal with the task and it's out of the way. A client will call me and say, Mr. Larry, I need this, this, this. All I just have to do is get my laptop, dress up, get in the car, and I can meet my client's, um, you know, needs. While... With my laptop there, I cannot equally work. I mean, so I can say categorically, these times have helped us, you know, readjust. It has made us even more productive because we begin to see things differently. And um, for me, it has been of tremendous help and importance. Though I know when the you know, when the pandemic wins, we'll get back to reality again. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, work starts the same way. But I know with that, I've been able to actually measure up and see ways you know to still keep up with both without anything clashing and interfering so Good. it's just a function of discipline how bad you want is how bad you walk around it Good, Larry, thank you. Um, you know, uh, time would always never be a friend on, on things like this. And I'm also mindful of Adelaide. the time of our audience and the data of our audience. In these days, that things are tough, you know. So otherwise, we could go on and on. But, you know, I'm almost sure uh, from the comments I've seen, you're going to be backed by popular demand. But in any case, before then, uh, I want to take you on on something that uh, you shared in 2019, uh, a Twitter session you had with Brand Sport. Uh, Nigeria. But I want to read the intro part and I want you to tell me the backstory of this uh, because this is what I said 
uh, relate with the thing you said. Because when I saw you list about 21 businesses, you can start with less than 100,000. I was like, ah, who is this guy? How this guy know these things? You know, but it confirms what you said, that the silent observer uh, is many times, you know, the biggest listener. Uh, and and, and I, he said in business, uh, the, the, one of your opening, uh, your, your opening uh, part of the article says, in business, you need the right attitude, else you will sink. Ensure friends and family pay for your goods and services. I know um, this because when I launched the book in uh, June last year, uh, one of the first tweets I did was businesses grow when, when friends and family pay. And so when my sister up. and my family were buying the book, I was tweeting their picture. Now friends and family are buying you know, all of you to go and buy. <laughs> Don't look for free book. Uh, but you know, it says ensure friends and family pay for your goods and services. Now, if you feel you are too big for a certain kind of business, then guess what? You will sink in, a, in parenthesis, I mean, in, in a <laughs> apostrophe. Then you said there's something we Yorubas call a faraway, meaning copying others' lifestyle with hashtag exclamation. Don't do it. <laughs> so, Larry, what, le what was the inspiration behind this? I want to know. Okay, um, precisely this tweet was done April 2018. Oh, 2018? So, um, yes, April oh, 2018. Oh, I saw it 2019. I didn't even know it was this far. 2018, <laughs> so that's what? It was April. Three years now? Yes. Ah, in two months, it'll be three years. Wow. And it's still so relevant. It, I mean, we are here. <laughs> and people could still, you know, connect to it. So, yeah. um, that came out of an anger. And I always refer to it as an anger because, you know, we need to be honest with ourselves. People mm. can be very, very funny when it comes to gestures. Okay, um, a member of the House of Rep um, in Oyo, for your state, I'm representing your state, I'm holding his constituency though, Akialabi. He said he well, was. Well, 2018, given... wasn't a member at the time. He just got in 2019, so he wasn't a member in 2018. I don't think. No, uh -huh. he wasn't. Was a businessman. He? he was a, he was running. He was a cannabis. He's the one that runs. The, okay, yes, he was still running. Yes, he was still running the betting uh, betting, the betting uh, program. So 2018 was a candidate uh, for I the 2019 election. Yes, was yes. exactly. Was candidate yes. Then. So um, he was running a program where he decided to give out. Um, um, he decided to give hundred and so he decided to give fifty one and thirty years, hundred thousand air. Mm. I did the like, That's a lot of money this guy is passing out with. You know, then I saw comments below that statement that what does 100k want to do for someone in this hashtag of uploading 100k and money I will blast the club. But you know, I was angry that blast the club. Have you made 100k today? Mm. <laughs> I mean, people do such. So I was like, have you made 100k today? I was, you know, but I and the fact that I sometimes don't really immediately reply to people because I want to see everything done very well so I can pass on my feedback. A lot of the feedbacks there were very ungrateful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it got to Akiel Abi at some point, you know, he was saying a lot of things, but, you know, he has done it, he has done it. I mean, giving 51 people 100,000 hours, you know, 100,000 hours is someone's monthly pay. Families run on 100,000 hours. Oh, yeah. as Nigerians. Yes. So, that's 5.1 million. That's 5.1 million. 5 million. 2018 million. money. 2018 money. Because 2021 money, that money has lost 25%. Is the value exactly. I'm out of one area. Exactly. Yeah. So, so 2018 money. That was a lot of money. Yeah. That was a lot of money. So, you know, I now tweeted something below that. Please. I said, I know, I know 21 business, I know 20 businesses you can start with 100k. I don't like mm. you. I wasn't even ready. For the post, I can remember categorically that morning I was at home. I didn't go to work. I asked for days of just to rest. So I was at home that day, and I also saw the tweets. I said, "I can, I can tell you. I know twenty businesses you can start with hundred k." Then right there, I saw some comments attacking me. That what? Tell us, we are listening. I you know, right there, I just laughed because, as I said, I listen to people a lot. I see, I observe a lot of things, and. Funny enough, where I grew was directly opposite the market. 
So you can see people doing businesses with very little. And it forms their lifestyle. It forms their living. So right there, I had that mind in me already that 100K is a lot. If you just tell people 100K inside this market, Abuja market, <laughs> trust me, their lives will change. Their business skills will change. Some people will change their businesses. So that was what made me start the post. And right there, it just started coming out. If you see the post, because until recently, I couldn't find the post on Twitter again. I probably will still, you know, you craft it and you post afresh. I realized as I was, you know, churning out those posts, people expected me to, you know, goof or fumble eventually. They probably mm. thought this was one of the mouth, but, you know, it just kept coming out. It was uncurated, it was, it was just raw tweets. And before I knew it, I found myself tweeting for someone. I yeah, because you did 20, since your promise was 20, and then you said, I can give you a jara 21. Yeah, exactly. and I can I found you jara could have continued to 51. <laughs> and honestly, I mean, honestly, the feedback, the feedback blew my mind. A lot of people will pass me by, they don't know Bodalari. I don't want you to know Bodalari. I just want you to see how best you can succeed. Mm. And that mm. was just everything around that post. I mean, people reach out to me randomly like, can I do this? I see this business. This thing looks like something I can do. One of people reached out and said, my wife is always at home. I think she can do this pop content. See, she's always going to church. And, you know, he bought a machine for his wife and he wants to supply for the church. You are assured of what? Income mm. every Sunday. From there, she moved on to school. What is it? But you see, I said something about that apparently. If you think one business is too big, that is too small for you, then trust me, it's not for you. Continue whatever you are doing. May the Lord be with you. But mm. the people in their droves who reached out to me appreciating the post and telling me it's been two years since I started this, you know, it gave me a sense that ah, I've given out a gift. I've given people something. Because who knows, some people do a seminar for that and charge. I but, know. I, mean, I just threw out, out of just, you know, random thought and anger. And I'm glad how far it's gone. I mean, <laughs> I've spoken in different places I never thought I would be. And I, I, and I all even came from JCI in Ogo State on the same post. I'm thankful uh, I was able to be available to do that. You, you know, uh, the truth is, Larry, that's how I got to know you. It was this post. Uh, it was this post. And then I got talking uh, with a team of mine uh, in Abuja. And um, then obviously one of my team members was like, ah, I know Larry now, nah, but that Larry, I know, you know. And that, that the bottom line is that's how I got to know you. Uh, by that, you know, one very intelligent tweet. And this is also one of the things I say uh, to our audience as well. It's not just about, you know, uh, liking or retweeting uh, <laughs> tweets or tra it's about being able to contribute intelligently. And this is something that, uh, that you have done. I, I, I'm sure Honorable uh, Aki Alabi would even be more pleased, you know, and uh, about, you know, the, the beauty and the benefit of this. And some of this is 51 beneficiaries then uh, may have gotten some ideas uh, from you. And I don't know if his office is even tracking uh, the impact. Perhaps we may invite him uh, or maybe have a joint session with both of you uh, to come back and really get to know about the impact of this on these 51 beneficiaries and many more that I reckon is hard to interface with now as a honorable uh, member and, uh, and, you know, input of, uh, because what you did uh, by this, uh, this article is what we do in consultancy, we call business development services. Uh, my close to 20 years experience in that has taught me that because the common error every person makes when they start talking about side also or how to or survivor is i don't have money i don't have money i don't have money uh, or uh, or capital 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 but they always forget the import of what you are saying which is starting with starting where you are with what you have uh, because we tend to always belittle that 10000 that 20000 uh, that we have and that's what you shared uh, in this article. Um, so time will not allow us uh, for me to have had Brother Larry to really zero in into some examples. He's given an example of popcorn, you know, that someone uh, inside us and only God knows the story of the lady now. I mean, like he said, she's gone beyond church. She's not even doing, uh, she's doing for schools 
I, I can give you another example from his uh, article, which was um, how to make boxes. Now, I would want him to dwell more on some of this. Uh, so I'll leave, I'll leave our audience with two challenges as I close with Brother Larry today. One will be, I already mentioned the title of the article. Go and search it out and see if you can tweet, uh, tweet it. Or those of you who are Twitter rats, go and search the tweet out. Since you know his Twitter handle, at Boda, B-O-D-A underscore Larry, go and search that tweet out, 2018 tweet that had a connection with Honorable Akia Labi. Uh, whoever is able to find it, I have a prize uh, I have a prize for you. Uh, that, that's one. And then if you want him by popular demand, even though uh, from your comments that I'm seeing, he shows that you want him, we will then bring him back uh, to, to discuss some of it because that's really uh, what this platform is about. This platform is not, whilst we will motivate you, whilst we will inspire you, but it's really more about the house for you to win. Uh, the application of the things we learn here uh, for you to wear. And I promised us something. I said those that will share this platform with me won't just be talkers. There will be people who through their own life uh, 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 not only have done it, are doing it and are winning, uh, winning from it. Uh, Larry, uh, let me say thank you. I hope you enjoyed yourself with us. Yes, I did. I look forward to the party. <laughs> yes, yes. So I, I'm glad we have your commitment. So I would also try and see how we can tag Honorable uh, Kalabi uh, on this conversation and see if I can have a joint uh, session between you and him uh, in our next, uh, in our next epi one of our next episodes. I can't commit to next week because he's a busy man. Uh, but let's see. Uh, but definitely I know I will have you back uh, to dwell more on this uh, real life side hustles thank you very much god bless you you're welcome thank you yeah Have thank you day. yeah so my audience uh my viewers you heard it uh i i told us uh, last week i said what i cannot tell you what our guest will share but i gave you an expo and how many of you believe that i deserve a gift for that expo if you believe so please go to www.neverandafterthought.com and go and buy a copy of the book or copies of the book for your friends and for your network. Because I, I said to us last week, I said one thing that I guarantee you that they will share, they will speak about grit. And what did we talk about grit? We said that, you know, that formidable, uh, you know, that position, that disposition that gets you to win. We talked about discipline. He mentioned it. Uh, he talked about uh, a few things. He says his passion for more in a legit way, keeps driving him. Uh, he talks about value add. Did you hear his experience about that Zambia phone uh, that people don't really like, but he, he decided to do what? Get games onto it, and it becomes attraction. Value addition, still uh, still important. Uh, he talked about his passion for cars and how it was a side hustle from school days, and he's still a side hustle uh, till tomorrow. Uh, he talked about uh, the discipline of time management. I always tell folks that you can't manage time because time goes regardless of whatever you do with it. But it's how to manage yourself within the context of time, which is discipline. We, he, he spoke about that and he said, that's the only way you can win with side hustles when you still have a main hustle with an employer. Because I'm not going to be here uh, encouraging you to be uh, irresponsible or encouraging you to be uh, to be an indisciplined uh, you know employee. Absolutely not. If you are committing your full time to someone, which should be your main, which is then your main hustle. Anything else you do must be side hustles. You know that does not in any way uh, intervene with your employer's time and morning he spoke about delegation and tracking now you see these are skills you know that the entrepreneurial uh skills and then i like what he said he says that um uh your main hustle funds your lifestyle while your side hustle supports it however he then threw out uh you know a way by which you can know when your side hustle is literally transitioning to becoming your main hustle. It's really that guide between when you're comparing what you earn from your uh, main hustle and what you are earning from your side hustle over a period of time. So he says to us, it requires a lot of planning, planning, 
planning so that you don't jump from side to main uh from you, you don't jump your side also becoming a main also and then you sink uh you know so uh, and uh, there are many more i mean you you have all uh what you've all listened but these are some of the uh summary summary points that i have taken away uh from today's session and uh yes you pulled it and you said 38 percent of you said the lifestyle of entrepreneurship you find it easy and 62 percent of you said uh paid employment but the whole point is now you can see from Bodalari's uh, life experience that both is a participant in both uh, and is winning across both and he is at this point still planning uh, whenever his exit may be uh, to make his side also uh, a main also. but until that time uh, it's about what being uh, keeping focus and stay tuned so as i also promised us uh, uh, i would uh, i'm sure from your comments that i'm reading I can see that a lot of you are asking questions. Yes, you can follow him at Boda, B-O-D-A underscore Larry. That's his Twitter handle. You can engage him. And I've thrown out a charge uh, to you. Go and search out that tweet. Uh, that was an engagement between him and the uh, and the uh, the empowerment of Honorable uh, Akin Labi, uh, one of our Federal House of Rep members for your state. Uh, he's also a key influencer on Twitter. And I'm hoping that... Uh, and one of our future episodes, I'll actually be able to bring them as a joint guest uh, for us to discuss uh, these practical winning tips. I've told you, uh, I'm not a motivational speaker. Uh, so we would inspire, we will motivate. But what is important is to share the practical tips by which you win and you win and you win and above all, you win big. Uh, so till I come your way again, don't forget uh that uh this conversation never ends it always continues using a hashtag never an afterthought across all our social media channels uh twitter at na underscore book facebook and uh, instagram at na afterthought our email is open for you podcast at never and afterthought.com and last but not the least we are already gleaning uh your comments on the uh platform wherein you are listening or watching me don't also forget uh that right after this show the contest of Ogbenedipo's uh, BTDT Hub uh, would wrap up. I uh, will give you uh, till 8 o'clock. I know we're inching closer to 7 p.m. now. I'll give you till 8 to 8 p.m. And that contest will freeze. And then we will uh, determine the winners uh, for who will benefit uh, from the CV review giveaways uh, of Ogbenedipo. Of many deeper. Uh, we would also at this any moment from now uh, stay tuned. Don't go right after I sign out now. Any moment from now, we would show you uh, the list of our winners for the poll. You have polled, but we said poll with reason. Uh, for those of you with exciting uh, reasons why you chose your answers, uh, stay tuned. Uh, hopefully, your name will be among our winners. Uh, so, yes, you are winners, but I will then let you know uh, what you would. Uh, but winning, but definitely an exciting prize. Uh, so till I come your way again, stay safe uh, so you can stay well and above all, keep winning. God bless you.